the world of the sea, they are the super predators, hunters at the very apex of the ocean's food chain. More than 350 species of sharks prowl the seas, flesh eaters that range in size from minnows to monsters. We'll meet more than a dozen of them here as we explore the world of the beautiful and deadly rulers of the deep. Precisely where our world ends, the world of the sharks begins. The shoreline marks the boundary of a realm that is at once wondrous and treacherous, a place whose secrets we have only barely begun to understand. An alien environment to most of us, the sea hosts a vast diversity of habitats, worlds whose splendors rival the most luxuriant of the wild places to be found on the land. The shadowy forests of giant kelp that flourish in the nutrient-rich waters off the California coast provide food and shelter for a dazzling array of ocean dwellers. A voracious horde of sea urchins munches its way through the fronds of a fallen giant, converting the simple carbohydrates in the kelp into complex proteins to fuel the marine food chain. Like the urchins, the decorator crab is dependent on the kelp, using its delicate claws to pluck pieces from the fronds. Artfully arranged, the snippets of kelp are used to adorn its body. With its camouflage in place and each piece meticulously adjusted, the crab is at last prepared. If the ruse works, it will appear no more enticing than a plant to a prospective predator. The sea otter preys on crabs and sea urchins, winding its body in the fronds of kelp while it watches for a bigger predator here, one it has good cause to fear. The blue shark is at home in temperate waters, including those of California's Pacific coast. A powerful and graceful hunter, it prowls the edges of the kelp forest searching for prey. A big blue shark, 12 feet in length, would have little trouble overpowering a sea otter. And on rare occasions, blues have attacked humans. But this is not surprising, considering that the blue is the most wide-ranging shark in the world. And unlike most other sharks, it is an adaptable and opportunistic hunter, feeding on whatever prey it can find. Mammals, however, do not form the bulk of the blue shark's diet. It prefers fish like these, which come to feed in the leafy groves of giant kelp. For some 350 million years, the ancestors of the blue have dwelled in the seas. And over that time, sharks have come close to perfecting their sleek design and their strategies for living.
the ways of the shark are of keen interest to the harbor seal. In early spring, on California's Channel Islands, the harbor seals haul out to bask in the sun, to rest and socialize, and to give birth to their pups. On the sand, the seals are relatively safe from predators. And it is possible, at least for a time, to put aside concern for the perils of life. But the sea denies the seals that luxury. A seal pup swept away in the surf could make a tempting target for a hungry blue shark patrolling offshore. The hefty adults are at home in the surf. But a sudden disturbance on land can send the whole colony into the sea, young and old alike, to take their chances with the sharks. From long experience, blue sharks off the Channel Islands know the breeding schedule of the harbor seals, and they watch for unguarded young. In any season, the blue shark is closely watched by adult seals and sea lions. For to them, it is not merely a threat, it is competition. In these waters, all three species prey on the same schools of fish, and the marine mammals do not welcome the shark's company. Fortunately for the seals, it is at night that the blues do most of their fishing. During the day, they are content to cruise, casually scanning the sea for targets of opportunity. In the shallow meadows of seagrass, the harbor seals fraternize and regroup. On a single lungful of air from the surface, a seal can stay under for a full 20 minutes. Such stamina proves useful to the seal as it cruises through the undersea gardens, hunting for fish, for squid, and crustaceans. It is in rich hunting grounds such as this that the two carnivores, the predatory mammal and the predatory fish, are most likely to cross paths. Though neither as agile nor as resourceful as the seals, the sharks are remarkably proficient hunters, endowed with an array of adaptations which make them one of nature's great success stories. Marvels of hydrodynamic design, typical sharks, like the blue, are lithe and streamlined, sharing an overall body plan with the dolphins, creatures that evolved the design independently. The bottlenose dolphin has come a long way toward assuming the form of a typical shark, though it pumps its tail for locomotion, while the shark snakes through the water by weaving from side to side. Curious and intelligent, the sharks have been called swimming computers because of their astonishing sensory skills talents which permit them to home in on their prey across miles of open water. Just as any prey species must learn to read the body language of the predators, the sea otter understands that the blue's arched back 
and its drooping pectoral fins mean trouble. And as a sea otter is likely to learn, a shark that is swimming placidly can fairly safely be ignored. The sea otter is the least aquatic of all the marine mammals. Compared to the seals and the dolphins, it is a relative newcomer to the neighborhood. The fish have been here for many millions of years longer, and they dominate the life of the sea. From the perspective of the predator, they are swimming packets of protein and it takes a strong swimmer to catch them. Aiding the shark in its perpetual quest for a meal is an arsenal of sophisticated sensory tools, including receptors for detecting electrical signals such as those produced by the heartbeats of its prey. The shark's sense of smell is another marvel. Some species of sharks may be able to detect as little as a single drop of blood in a million drops of water. A skill which spells bad news for a wounded fish or marine mammal. Sharks are also equipped with extraordinary sensitivity to sound, especially the low-frequency pulsed sounds produced by struggling prey. Any strange object in the blue's domain is carefully investigated. In close quarters, a special membrane protects its sensitive eyes from injury. large round eyes of the blue shark are the hallmark of a predator that has evolved to hunt at night. In low light, an animal with superior vision has the competitive edge. Elegant, enigmatic, and superbly engineered, the sharks are survivors. And over the millennia, they have claimed dominion in the world of the sea. If there is anywhere on Earth that can claim to be the true home of the sharks, surely it is here, in the warm waters that wash across the world's tropical reefs. Sharks are found in all the oceans, but it is the tropics that boast the greatest diversity and abundance of shark species. From the surface, a tropical reef may seem to be little more than a jumble of lifeless rock. But these are the skeletons of animals, creatures whose bodies are the builders of reefs and of palm-fringed coral atolls. Each zone of the reef, from the shallows to the drop off into deep water, houses its own community of life and its own species of sharks. The gray reef shark is stouter and heavier than its cold water kin, the blue shark. Not as graceful or agile as the blue, it trades maneuverability for lethal power and speed. The smaller, white-tip reef shark sports a torpedo-shaped body, ideal for weaving through coral canyons and for darting after fish which shelter in the hidden crevices and crannies of the reef. The black-tip reef shark is another hunter of the coral reef 
as is its cousin, the silver-tipped reef shark, and the reclusive zebra shark, a sluggish bottom dweller that haunts the seafloor, hunting for small, crawling things. Though much of its time is spent in repose, the zebra shark makes occasional forays over the reef, accompanied on these patrols by a squadron of slender remoras, which pick parasites from its skin and dine on scraps from its meals. Much swifter and more active, the gray reef shark usually keeps to the open water, where it forages for game. Like many bigger sharks, it must stay in motion in order to breathe. Lush, warm, and bathed in sun, the coral reef is a grand oasis of life. Amid the living fingers of the corals, multitudes find refuge and sustenance, protected from the perils of the open ocean. Tiny hatchlings hide in the gardens of stone, while a steady rain of plankton bathes the reef in the nourishment on which nearly all the life in the sea depends. Dozens of species of coral cluster together on the reef, each a specialist in exploiting what the currents sweep their way. The green moray is the cobra of the corals. Though an aggressive predator, it meets its match in a territorial Nassau grouper. Reluctantly, the moray is forced to give way. It resumes its hunt across the reef. Though it may look like a snake, the moray too is a fish. But the banded sea snake is a true aquatic serpent. Armed with deadly venom, it puts its slender form to good advantage as it seeks out prey in the reef. By day, the reef is a place of drama, but when the sun sets, it's transformed into an arena of death. Most sharks hunt by night. And especially on moonlit nights, the reef can be a perilous place for a fish. Wise fish stay close to cover when the reef sharks are on the prowl. Now the superlative sensory skills of the sharks afford them a strong advantage over their prey, permitting them to hunt in nearly total darkness. Cuttlefish also hunt at night, and they are hunted by the shark. Their enormous eyes scan the sea for danger. And like their relatives, the squid, they can jet away in an instant if alarmed. Like many sharks, this hunter carries a remora along for the ride. By hitchhiking, the smaller fish saves energy and may earn itself a meal. A hunting shark is a warning to the reef fish to lay low. And in these dark hours, those that cannot hide go about their nightly chores with extra vigilance and caution.
While the moonlit reef holds deadly perils, the day brings challenges as well. Though some sharks prefer to hunt alone, other species make a specialty of hunting in packs. A group of gray reef sharks casually cruises the reef, searching for food. By hunting together, the sharks take advantage of the sensory skills of each member of the pack. If one finds prey, the rest may share the rewards. Small and healthy reef fish are ignored by these big hunters. Like all successful predators, they budget their reserves, saving their energy for the largest and easiest prey. The sharks are countershaded, colored darker above, lighter below, to camouflage them from their prey. Against the reef, their gray backs help them to disappear, while their pale bellies make them hard to distinguish against the bright ocean above. As long as the sharks are only cruising, the other creatures of the sea pursue their business unperturbed. But safety is a fleeting illusion on the reef. Contrary to the common assumption that sharks will eat anything and everything they can find, most sharks are finicky about their food, selecting only certain sizes or types of prey. Some species on the reef are actually repugnant to sharks, and the same chemicals which protect them may one day provide humans with effective shark repellents. ecology of the reef, the sharks play an essential role. All of the life here would suffer if they were to disappear. Over millions of years, they've staked their claims to a wide range of distinct ecological niches. The great hammerhead shark, which may reach 19 feet in length, is a hunter of deep tropical reefs and drop-offs while the slightly smaller scalloped hammerhead stalks the shallower tropical seas, hunting its favorite prey, the squid. The bizarre wing-like head of the hammerhead affords it unusual maneuverability, an advantage when hunting fast and agile prey. The widely spaced eyes and nostrils, located on the tips of the wings, enhance the shark's powers of sight and smell, important pluses for any predator. Though eerie in appearance, hammerheads are notoriously shy, and few attacks have been reported on humans. But the same cannot be said for the tiger shark a reputed man-eater that is widely regarded as the most dangerous shark in tropical waters. Growing to a maximum length of 18 feet, it has been known to attack even boats. It is especially fond of turtles. The powerful jaws of the tiger shark can bite a sea turtle in two, and the acids in its stomach can digest even the shell.
Among the sharks, as with other predators on land and sea, most attempts at predation end in failure. While the tiger shark has liberal tastes, the tawny nurse is a specialist, content to scour the seafloor for small fish and invertebrates. Sensitive barbels on its jaw may help the shark locate hidden prey as it feels its way along the bottom. Hunting together in a school, the tawny nurse sharks methodically survey the sand flats. Through cooperative effort, they enhance the chances that each will find a meal. Every stratum of the reef has its resident hunters, predators designed to fit the habitat and the type of prey they hunt. The distinctive white tip on the tail and the dorsal fin of the white tip reef shark may serve as a lure for fish. Or the bright white markings may help the sharks to keep one another in sight in the dark reaches of the reef. With their bullet-like physique, the white tips are built for speed and agility, useful talents when searching for prey in the jumbled maze of the reef. As it hunts, the incredible sensory system of the shark constantly sweeps the terrain, scanning for telltale odors, telltale sounds, or the subtle electrical signals which may guide it to its prey. Like most sharks, the white tip hunts primarily at night. During the day, with its stomach full, it may retire to a secluded corner of the reef to doze and digest its dinner. Then, after a few hours of much needed rest, the sharks of the tropical reef are ready to hunt again. Close to half a billion years ago, near the dawn of the Paleozoic era, the earliest relatives of the sharks appeared in the seas. They may have looked something like this. The creatures known as chimeras are living relics, ancient members of the great class of fish which include sharks and rays. But while the chimeras remain an oddity, one of evolution's dead ends, the sharks and the rays have flourished, populating the oceans of the world with more than 800 species. A stingray erupts from the ocean floor behind a smoke screen of sand. Essentially flattened sharks, the rays sport vastly enlarged pectoral fins, which they use as wings to fly across the seafloor. Most rays are confirmed bottom dwellers, 
lurking in the sand when they are not pursuing their prey, mainly shellfish, which live on the ocean floor. Like the sharks and the chimeras, the rays have evolved skeletons which are entirely composed of cartilage. As a result, their bodies are lighter and more elastic than those of the bony fishes. Maneuverability is an important trait for any ocean-going predator. And for fluidity of form, few creatures on Earth compare with the graceful rays. Perfectly camouflaged to blend with their habitat, a pair of spotted stingrays sail over a rocky reef while a California bat ray, like a vampire in a black cloak, weaves its way through the twisted labyrinth of canyons. The stinger rides flat against the stingray's tail and contains a neurotoxin to discourage would-be predators. Eagle ray, however, has forsaken such protection while trading its billowy fins for powerful bird-like wings. But the pinnacle of ray evolution is the giant manta ray, here giving a ride to a pair of remoras as it sweeps the sea for prey. With a wingspan which may reach 23 feet, this is the monster among the rays. But despite its size, the giant manta is one of the most placid creatures in the sea. Its great mouth agape, the manta wings over the reef, feasting on gargantuan quantities of plankton and tiny fish. so-called filter feeder, the manta dines as it swims, sucking a swath through the clouds of plankton like a colossal vacuum cleaner. From the manta, it is a small step to the most primitive sharks. Like many of the rays, the angel shark is a bottom dweller with wing-like pectoral fins. And like the rays, it is a master of camouflage. But like a true shark, it swims with a sculling motion of its tail while keeping its pectoral fins rigid. An ambush predator of the seafloor, the angel shark prefers to wait for its prey to come to it. By contrast, the marbled cat shark, another bottom dweller, actively searches for wayward crabs and mollusks. When threatened, the cat shark makes for the reef, where it hides, beautifully camouflaged against the mottled surface of the rocks. Like the vast majority of the 350-plus species of sharks, the cat shark is timid and harmless to humans. But shy or not, all of the sharks are predators. A docile horn shark searches for mollusks, urchins, and shellfish, finding shelter where it can from the jaws of larger hunters. Another camouflage artist, the Port Jackson shark, wears a pattern of stripes to blend with his home in the seagrass. 
Its eggs, swathed in a leathery case with screw-like flanges, are left on the reef to hatch or to be devoured by other predators. With broad sweeps of their eel-like tails, a pair of nurse sharks propel themselves through the reef. Sluggish and non-aggressive, the nurses are suction feeders, swooping down on invertebrates and sucking them out of the sand. By contrast, the tiger shark tears chunks of flesh from anything it encounters. Wounded in a previous engagement with a fisherman's hook, the giant shark, attended by a tiny remora, drifts across the seafloor, watching for any game it can catch. In its body plan, the tiger shark is typical of the requiem or whaler sharks, a family which includes several other species that have earned reputations as man-eaters. The mako shark has a different design, bullet-shaped and compact. Capable of bursts of speed that may top 50 miles per hour, the mako uses its power to chase down swift-moving prey in the open sea. Though the sand tiger shark is distantly related to the mako, its way of life is far different. Despite its fierce, snaggletooth visage, the sand tiger spends much of its time slowly cruising accompanied by pilot fish, which feed on scraps from its meals. But no sharks are more specialized than the hammerheads, which belong to a family of their own. With its wing-shaped head, the hammerhead represents an extreme of shark evolution. It's a design which has proven highly effective for the shark. Few sharks have more acute senses or more success in finding prey. The blue shark, with its friendly face and its large round eyes, is the most familiar of all the sharks. It is one of the few species of sharks designed to hunt by sight in the open ocean. Fortunately, fish are its favorite food. But the same cannot be said for the great white. The world's largest flesh-eating fish, the great white shark is a living legend. Only the killer whale outranks it as the topmost predator in the sea. But the biggest of all the world's fish is the whale shark. Reaching a length of 40 feet, a big whale shark is the size of a city bus. Yet it supports its colossal bulk almost entirely on a diet of plankton. Filtering its food as it swims, it drifts through the sun-spangled sea, a gentle giant, a monarch in the world of the sharks. Beneath the surface of the cold gray seas which break against temperate shores lies one of the richest ecosystems on the planet. Dredged from the deep by powerful tides, a great broth of nutrients and plankton is stirred by the waves. Out of this collision of biological riches and titanic forces, conditions are created which meet the needs of some of the sea's most robust creatures.
fur seals flourish in places like this, nourished by the bounty of fish which swarm in the plankton thick waters. For them, the lure of the fish is worth the threat of the great white shark. Beyond the beach, past the pools where the young seals frolic, the great predator waits. And along these shores, few marine mammals will live their lives without encountering the killer. The great white represents one of the high points in shark evolution. A fish, which as an adult, feeds almost exclusively on warm-blooded prey. At a length of 20 feet or longer, and a weight of over two tons, the great white is a formidable hunter. And it's the nemesis of sea mammals ranging in size from seals to whales. But what the shark possesses in power, it lacks in agility, and a swift and sharp-eyed sea lion can usually outmaneuver it. Swimming circles around the great white, the sea lion frustrates the giant and drives it away from the rookery on the shore. It is a bold act, which could cost the sea lion its life. With its childlike grin and its savage jaws, the great white shark may seem to be the very personification of terror. But even for this super predator, finding a meal is not easy, even in places where seals and sea lions abound. The tactic of the shark is the surprise attack. It is the rare adult fur seal on this beach off South Australia, which does not bear the scars of a close call with a great white. The majority of attacks are near misses, and the prey survives to face the great white again. With only one weapon, its jaws, the shark faces a tough challenge against the quick and clever marine mammals. It uses its nose to search for the telltale clues, which could lead it to an injured and bleeding animal. Though by profession a lone hunter, a great white is likely to be joined by others of its kind if there's blood in the water. And as they swim, the sharks remain ever alert, scanning the sea for the subtle sounds produced by a struggling prey. Hunting primarily by day, they patrol the waters near the surface, where the air-breathing mammals spend much of their time. Their objective? To get within easy striking range of the wounded or the unwary. attack comes from below, and if properly executed, the prey never sees its attacker. After a quick first strike, the shark circles, 
and closes in for the kill. But even a wounded sea lion can put up a valiant fight, and great whites are occasionally killed in battles with powerful prey. The wounds on the side of the shark testify to many encounters with the razor-sharp claws of sea lions. But the pain and the effort pays off, for after a single hearty meal, the great white can survive for as long as two months before it must feed again. In countless ways, the hunted and the hunter depend upon each other. Without the services each provides, the other could not prosper. As a predator, the great white has few equals, and by culling the weak and unfit among its prey, it ensures that the strongest, the best adapted, live and multiply. An unlucky few will die in the jaws of the hunter. But the species will endure, made stronger by the predator. Viewed in this light, the great white is less an agent of death than it is an agent of life, a creature that plays its own vital part in the world of the sea. The sharks and rays have coursed through the sea a hundred times longer than humans have lived on the earth. By any standard, theirs is a remarkable achievement. Though we have gained insights into their world, far more remains undiscovered. Probing the secrets of the sharks is a great adventure and one that has only recently begun. Mysterious and magnificent, they stand at the peak of a great pyramid of life, contributing in diverse ways to the splendor of life in the sea. as long as their kind swims the seas. The rulers of the deep will endure as the living symbols of a wondrous and yet untamed world.